special interview segment. We're going to be speaking with uh, a co-collaborator on the Sword and Dove album. It's Kel Rowley, who is uh, who is pretty much the uh, the writer on all these uh, tunes that you'll that you've been hearing that we've been previewing for you, and um, it was a really exciting project, and it was uh, it was a. Um, you know, an intense long haul to get it done, but it was pretty awesome along the way. And uh, please uh, welcome my guest and collaborator and friend, Kel Rowley. Are you there? Okay, I'm good, but we have um, we have a sound issue already. Okay. And I have no um, audio on you. Why, I don't know. I, I believe it's a, uh, it's a, I think I understand but uh, I'm gonna have to let's see Are you still there yes, I'm here. okay okay so obviously I'm gonna eek I hate these technical things right out of the box um, okay what about what about now you, you're coming through clear okay so basically there you are um, Okay, well, welcome to the, you know, finally to the show here. What, what, so what do you think? The CD got done. We went through the process and we uh, emerged. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so how do you feel about uh, the, your album being done? Um, I, I think I'm still in, I'm in shock still. This last year has just been absolutely amazing and i just i didn't anticipate any of this happening but now that the work is done and it's out there and it's actually a tangible object people can hold in their hands and put their earbuds on and listen to it i'm i'm so excited because Ear i know god's yeah. been right here through the whole thing so <laughs> yes earbuds <laughs> heaven earbuds. forbid uh, <laughs> earbuds please don't <laughs> Folks, don't listen with earbuds. The album is Sword and Dove. Uh, it was a, 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 oh, there goes my, ah, well, what can happen will happen. <laughs> we're, we're going. But the album is Sword and Dove. It's available at ReverbNation.com uh, forward slash Z-E-D-J-A-H. -A -Z -E and in the store there, you can get this um, on-demand CD, and it's terrific. I have one right here. And the... Um, What's really great about it is, um, you know, in addition to the music uh, and how the music flows from one thing to another, is the uh, the artwork, the CD, the um, you will like just having this CD when you're listening. And um, I just went ahead and uh, put it in the computer and and it just you know imported it into the uh, iTunes. And then I have it to play, you know, in the car or whatever. It's just, it's just a great thing to have the uh, actual album and the artwork that we did. So you can be able to look at something while you're listening. It's just kind of, it, it, it just, you know, I may be old school, but it just makes it a lot easier for me to have something to look at and have a physical CD in addition to having the, uh, an iTunes download. It will be available on iTunes uh, pretty soon as well and Amazon and all your favorite stores. Um, but what we like, right, Cal? We want them to listen. It it it's really an album that's it's it's not like just independent tracks. It really goes from one to the last, right? Yeah, there's a there's a really nice flow to all of it, and uh, we didn't we didn't set that up initially. It just it just um it kind of just happened and evolved that way, don't you think? Yeah, it 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 was uh, basically. Uh, no, we had no plan. The Lord had a plan. We wanted to do an mm. album that was, uh, the, I mean, you wanted to do an album that was your heart for the Lord and just dedicated and, and that was it. So everything was, you know, kind of relying on him and that would include the editing, the flow, the order. We didn't know the order, but it, it's, there's been a presence on this thing from the beginning. Yeah, it really has. And 
helped you in the writing and helped me in the producing. And there were times where I, you know, because I we have a new studio here, and you know, so there I had the, the ultimate learning curve of um, some serious hardware, you know, kind of intimidating hardware. Yes, indeed. And uh, so, but but what the Lord gave me were, were ears, and the ears you can't buy, <laughs> you know. So I found out my ears were, were reliable in this whole process, and and uh, that really helped me but still there was a learning curve we were mixing songs six seven times they were scrutinized and i think the result speaks for itself they came out all the better for all the extra work that went into it on the on the post-production end but oh yeah without the production end without you know your writing which was uh you know i think everyone acknowledges that's heard you that you have this gift of song structure it's just like a natural just auto, it just automatically comes out being a song well i uh you know i've been songwriting since i was a little kid okay. and but to me it's it's kind of like math it is math you know it's it's putting formulas together you have section a section b section c or whatever and section but, um, eight. how about section eight <laughs> <laughs> but what's been really cool <clears throat> Excuse me. What's been really cool about this um, experience is that you and I come at music from two different directions, and there was a synergy in that mm -hmm. that I don't think we would have gotten if we wrote the same or if we made music the same. But I'm I'm more linear. I go from the beginning to the end, and you you're a collage artist when it comes to music. In a lot of ways, and so a chaos, a chaos I, freak. It, it was. I I love that way that God used our talents and He brought them together and made something that <laughs> I, we. I couldn't. I can't compare it to anybody else's music. There's nothing else out there like this. No.
Like shards of glass on your ocean shore I'm scattered all around To the hear the sound Of your great love come over me Piece me back together in the likeness of you God, your presence is what I crave And to behold you know and you have you know Lennon McCartney there was you know that it, it each one of them I mean I'm taking like you know the, the, the best example and each I, either one of those guys you know the late John Lennon whatever or was it yeah. the, or is it the late Paul McCartney and the current John Lennon <laughs> <laughs> anyway you take either one of those guys uh, separately and it's just it's not anything the same. It's nowhere near the collaboration. Right. It's like Elton John and Bernie Toplin, you know? Right, right. Well, awesome. yeah, Bernie, the lyricist. Of course, I don't, I don't know if Bernie, if he did anything on his own. <laughs> so. Well, I actually, you know, it's strange. We should mention Bernie Toppin because I had, he had a restaurant in L.A. called Cicada. I don't know if he still had, but it was years and years ago. And I, I had to go there with a... Um, Oh, there was a mess a friend of mine got into in a, in a film production company, and I was, you know, helping him out uh, with testimony. And so we, the lawyer took us there to Cicada, and then Bernie came over and sat down, just a regular guy, brought, gave us a bottle, wow. you know, it's like a $300 bottle of Montrachet wine, and said, drink up, uh, it's on the house. So I guess they were pretty good friends, this lawyer. Yeah. And him. But it was all, you know, it was kind of, it was, it was, I don't want to get distracted from what we're talking about, but he was a very nice person and you, you look at him and you go, he's the lyricist, really? <laughs> <laughs> Just like they could look at us and go, you really wrote that? <laughs> or like me, yeah. you mean you were, you were involved in that? You seem yeah. like such a nice person. I can't imagine you, uh... <laughs> but uh, and th and then others, you know. There's been, um, you know, uh, most recently the comeback for uh, Stevie Nicks, who's been on the road. And, and we're talking about secular music here, as opposed to Christian, because I I don't really know much about Christian music. Yeah. Other than, y you know, what I've heard, and I kind of got turned off by it. And. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that, but I mean, w one was kind of feeling like, I just don't like formulaic music, you know? I don't like, um, you know, artists that are kind of emulating the top 40 or whatever, but then instead of, oh, baby, baby, they're singing about Jesus, but it could just be as well be their lover. You know, I just, I don't know, the whole thing kind of just made me feel icky, the whole commercial industry. And so then I preferred the secular music, um, to the Christian, which is really strange since I'm, you know, I'm sold out to God totally and, you know, put myself out there doing the word and everything else. And I just, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a strange thing. Well, what are your thoughts on the Christian well, music industry? Um, I had a short bout in the church, um, a few years ago. I was, I was a worship leader for a while. And so I had to, um, play a lot of that formulaic type of music and it, it's there's no creativity in it I mean some of it some of it you can really feel God's anointing on okay and it moves you and stuff like that but it's it, it's not like writing your own original music and there's some of it that I like but you know I like all different kinds of genre of music and I think that music is what God uses to speak to everything. It's sound, right? <clears throat> it's sound that carries the word. And mm -hmm. I feel that that's a, that's a universal concept. But I'm not a universalist. No, I no. To Jesus too. <laughs> but mu music is like, you know, the, the whole universe came into existence from music. From the, that's right. From the sound, the music of the spheres. He spoke the word and it all came into existence. Yeah. And, and, that, and that word is Jesus. Amen. 
I just, uh, you know, and when you start thinking about that, it, I don't know, it gives, it gives me tingles because I think that's, that's the mystery, the mystery of God. Yeah, and and certainly during this process of the writing of the album and and the you know and all the production issues we had and and uh, doing a, a remote collaboration and then finally being able to collaborate in the studio here um, as it was being built by uh, uh, Rob Russell, who's uh, he's affiliated now, I guess, with Sweetwater and and also JBL, and I'm not sure what else, but he kind of cut his teeth on cut on on mixing all the. Uh, the famous artist in LA is it won a Grammy and so forth. And he was here mixing. And then I was sort of, you know, he, we were setting up tracking sessions with you. Remember how exciting that was? Yeah. Did, yeah, did, it was. And we did pieces. And then I was like in the role of producer kind of coat telling, you no, I need this here. I need that here. I hope I didn't, <laughs> I hope I wasn't too overbearing. <laughs> I, no. you, know, you know, I was, I was, and then Rob goes, and he was helping out saying, oh, I know what you're looking for. So we had him at the controls and we had me in the, with the producer's hat on and then Cal behind the, uh, the mic. And, yeah. uh, it just, that track turned out so well. I'm so well, that- happy with that. That was an amazing day when we were tracking the vocals for that. And um, Rob, he's, he's so talented, yeah. so talented. And it, but it, it really made it easy to work with you because I, I feel very comfortable with you. And we've only known each other for what, a, a little over a year and a half, maybe. So we met, and we've only met it was, it was, a year ago. Yeah, I, I stuck my neck out, and I saw, I heard one of your YouTube tracks you put up and I said, Hey, let me produce your next album. Not really even having a comprehension of how, just how involved that would be. <laughs> you know, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You know, it's cool. No, I like work. You know what I mean? It, but it, but you know, it, when you commit to an album, to a project, you know, right. you, you better be ready to bring your game. You know, you, you're, you're not, because it's just not for the faint of heart because there's ups and downs and sideways. And some yeah. days you feel inspired. Right. And in other days you, you, you feel like uh, we're crashing and burning. Right. And you don't know what people yeah. think because no one's heard it yet. And you're thinking, am I crazy? You know, and then, no, That's keep going. Right. So we had all that. And, uh, uh, we did, but God, he sustained us because he just, it seemed like even when things got crazy, we came back, we came back to the quiet place.
when I when I first heard you, and I can't remember the name of the podcast, or it, it was actually a video on YouTube, but on the cover it said "Lost Brother." And uh, so when I heard you, um, I, for me it was the beginning of a, a healing journey, and it, I was eating up all of that conspiracy theory that was out there, you know, (laughs) (laughs) because I I just, a lot of it, a lot of it you just find fascinating, but it's just, it's what it is. It's just brain candy. Okay. It's just stuff to think about. It's neither here nor there. We can, none of us know the hour or the day that, that Jesus is going to come back. None of us know if Nibiru is going to come over and whack our planet. We don't know those things for sure, but it's, it's interesting and imaginative to think about it, you know? <laughs> yeah, and it consumed all our time. And then, you know, at times I would talk to Frankie and say, well, and he'd go, you got any good smack? Yeah. And then we were on the air, you know, and saying, um, and I remember we went through a period where we were on the RBN network at one point, and then we're on the air going, well, you got any good, we're talking to the callers, you know, who never heard that term. Hey, you got any good smack to the callers? Yeah. Come on, give me a fix. I need something. <laughs> And we made a joke out of it. But then you were inspired to write the song that, that we really met with this song called Restoration. Well, we had, I was coming over to um, New Mexico on an airplane, and it was like January 2nd or 3rd or whatever. Yeah. And you had put out a podcast 2012. It was the first, I think it was January 1st. And I just remembered, um, because I had written the note down in my notebook, the way that you began the podcast was, no to self, no more self-inflicted wounds. That was the way that you began it. And um, (laughs) but in that podcast, you were talking about that we, that God was calling you not to concentrate on this, on the fear-mongering and the speculation so much anymore, because really where we needed to be was in the place where he could rejuvenate us and restore us. And um, it was interesting because that was kind of your prophecy for the year. This would be the year of, of, I think you called it the year of translation, rejuvenation, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just so interesting how that has unfolded at least in my life, and I've seen it in your life as well, that God brought all of that to pass. You know, there was amazing healing. And that's, that's why I think that he called us to make this album was the, perk, the perks out of it was that we were healed in the process of doing it, right? But also we were called to bring this album out for the lambs for other people for the prodigal we're we're called to bring this music out so it will heal them and touch them you know yeah Um, and and we had you had another version of restoration yeah (laughs) we did that we i'm sorry i got off i got off i got off track well i was when i come to new mexico i have musicians that i play with and um my I didn't have a drummer this time and I had just barely known Zeph. We had talked on the phone. We had met once for lunch, right? Yes. And uh, yes. and so I called you up just on a whim and I was like, Hey, you wanna come and play drums? And and you were like, Well and so sure and so that that was so cool because you and Trish came down and, and we all played music together and that's when we, we recorded our first versions of Restoration in pieces and that was how it began you know so it was the first time playing music together and it was like yes it just it, it felt right who's paying attention to the headlines headlines who's paying attention to the news Feeding us misinformation Reject the fear mongers and embrace restoration 
singing about restoration, singing about rejuvenation, singing about contemplation of love. They've got us feeding off one another They've got us feeding up each other But it's multiple sides of the same thin dime We're arguing over nothing And they steal our money and our time But I'm singing about Restoration, singing about rejuvenation, singing about contemplation of love. Go Of love, of love. Contemplation of love. You know, you and I come from completely different backgrounds, but there's something about being a lamb and some of the things that we've had to go through that are very similar spiritually. Yeah. And this this album reflects a little bit of that. Um, most of these songs were written very recently. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the words were words that were in my notebook in the last two or three years. But... Uh, like awake, awake is that place where you, you really, you can't move and you feel like you're stuck. But eventually the Holy Spirit comes upon you and brings an epiphany and wakes you up. And you realize that the only way that you're going to wake up is if you allow him to forgive you, to, to allow Jesus to forgive you and the Father to forgive you through Jesus, and also to forgive yourself. Because I don't know about you, 
but for me, uh, shame, the enemy used shame like a rock and beat me <coughs> with it since I was a small child. And it took a long, long time for me to forgive myself and just accept myself who I am in God. Yeah. So anyway, uh, awake, awake kind of is the beginning of that journey and I think also uh, pieces also reflects that place that a lamb is in when you are falling apart but you know that if you praise the Lord when you're in that place that he he does restore you you praise you praise him and you put your eyes and your thoughts on him and on love and he makes you whole again and yeah. so anyway the, I, this album is about some of the wounding that happens to us but also it's it's, it's praise to God first and foremost exactly. I mean don't you think that yeah and, and, and how what we thought was so awful Right. You, you know, when he restores us, it's instantaneous and it's like, oh, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah what, all that stuff that was supposed to be so tragic. And yeah. I'm, I'm fine. I'm, there is no, what trauma? You right. Know, what abuse? What, you, you know, so, so, I, I mean, I came to detach actually from, you know, the abuses of, uh, of, uh, you know, I've seen I've seen things that are ridiculous. You know that, that and I, I just couldn't believe that people hadn't been talking about them. And um, but but really, I had to detach from the emotional baggage of it. In other words, the harm of it. Right. You know, and and crying about it, and 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 worrying about it, and and being fearful of it, and and all those things, or else I couldn't go forward and speak on the internet in a cohesive way about this subterranean world that we call Satan's world, which, you know, and, and, and the, and the brokenness of humanity, humanity is broken and it can only be fixed, you know, one way. That's right. And, 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 and so we, we want to talk about all that. In other words, presenting the problem, yes, harm, trauma, um, and then presenting the method of the solution, praising God, giving right. it up to God, giving your life over. And then the, the rejoicing of, you know, and this is the last track on the album, what was meant for harm to harm us all, everyone on this planet is, yeah. is used for good for those who love the Lord God and are called according to his purpose. You know, in other words, his purpose, not ours. You say, okay, Lord, whatever your purpose is for me in my life. I mean, I'll just, you know, and a lot of times when you pray that prayer that I just want to be the extension of your will, Father, what happens is it seems that your desires then after that, if the prayer is answered, your desires are his will. You yeah. Just get in sync. And, um, you know, the great thing about that is, well, never alone, never traumatized, um, completely whole, completely restored. So let's go back into the fear mongering and get ourselves upset again. Shall we? <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, uh, you know, but there's a lot of angles to this, you know, and, and, um, you know, and just sticking with the, um, uh, with the album, you know, it seems that, um, we went through a, a process, you, you know, of, if I just read the titles here, you'll see, you know, it begins with awake, this awakening that there is a solution. There is a God, there is a way. Then sunrise, the sun is rising, you know, the sun, uh, Jesus, then pieces, um, you know, going from brokenness to wholeness. Let the river flow. In other words, Lord, we just want to praise you and, and be according to your will. And so we want to let the river flow. We don't want to put you in a box, God. We just want to let the river flow. Wayward child. We're all wayward children, right? When we're prodigals, we're running away from God, you know, and, and so then progresses to third person. You know, if you can just put, put yourself in the third person, get a perspective on um, on your life and the relationship with God and what's going on, then restoration. Let's put the fear mongering away and get into healing, healing rather than fear. And then baptism in the backwaters. I guess Kel, that's your story of. Uh, 
I um, don't know what that is. That's that's a crazy track. <laughs> you, but it's really cool, and it's like. If, there's one line you say, if you were a salamander, um, you would love being in, in, you know, all muddy and the muck. The silt would feel like silk, yes. Yeah, but you're not. And so, you know, you, and, you know, you talk about this cold stone, this burden that we all have, this stone, yeah. this thing that's, that's pressing against us, you know, our humanity, our flesh, our dying, our diseases, our troubles. It's just like a weight on us. And, yeah. Um, I- Go ahead. Talk about that a little bit. Oh, I don't know that the image last night popped up in my head. I was thinking about Johnny, Johnny Cleck talking mm-hmm. about the split in our DNA mm-hmm. and us having both parts in us, the flesh and the spirit, essentially. That's the way I look at it. And that's to me that that's kind of what that stone is. But it also, I mean, it, it takes on a lot of different symbols. It also can represent the thorn in your side that God gives you that you have to deal with through your life. So, um, I don't know. It's <laughs> Baptism in the backwater is a very strange track, and I just hope that the listeners will figure out what it means for them. Oh, I'm going to insert it right here. After I, <laughs> in post, when I post-produce this interview, I'm going to just put it in right here so that you... you so you'll be hearing this right now, and then we'll come back. Uh, but then yeah. it goes on from there to Infinity, a really fun track. That's- Infinity is, is about the math of God. Mm-hmm. It's about the math, God's math of the cosmos. And yeah. um, uh, when I was in college and, and studying calculus, you know, and, and uh, I was introduced to fractals, Um that image of things going on and on and on and on mm-hmm. and the infinite, the infinite design that God has throughout the cosmos, throughout the universe or of universes, you know, we really don't know. I think when we remember that, then there's no way that we can put him back in the box that we think that he could fit in, you know? Our little brains can't hold him. So anyway. Yeah, and, and, and it goes on You know on what? And on. I, I fell in love with that bass, that Moog bass that we put on there. Yeah, I it did, was pretty and cool. And I had, I had such a good time. Yeah, playing. that bass was really cool. That kind of <laughs> remind, it, it, it harkened back to the days of the Moog synthesizer and to some of those dance tracks of the 80s. And But it's not, well, that, it's not that, though. But you know, it, kind, it sounded kind of stiff when I first did it, and it was very 80s, you know, and, and it really brought out my geeky self. But when you added your drums and you made it all, you know, cool and yeah, I still modern, I still followed so. your lead. I followed your lead and, and put like the the reverb gated '80s drum on there. Mm-hmm. And, but it's but even if as we're trying to emulate this sort of '80s feeling, it never. Infinite, your love goes on. If 
fun and your love goes on Explain as best you can The land you love a man The gravity may pull Just how does it know about it I think I, I didn't really discuss it with anybody until the last year you know, and we started talking about it actually you didn't know anything about it until a year ago January so but um, when I was a little girl I grew up in a, in a strange little village in New Mexico in between two Indian reservations it was very small but there was a there was a little church in a house down the street and I went there and a lady prayed over me one night and I was only about five years old and sometimes I think she was a witch. Now I think she, she was a witch. She was a tool definitely. But anyway, she prayed over me and, and um, she prophesied that, I would have to go through the end times and that I would have to be a martyr for Christ and um, that I was going to see the end and I was going to have to do the right thing and die for it. And for a five-year-old with a pretty good active imagination, that really freaked me out. And the nightmares began and they continued for the next, 20 years and that shaped my spiritual world I had to I don't you know that place where we talk about it all the time and I and I know that you probably had to visit that place when you were a child too it's the place where the angels and the demons, the principalities, are all right there. Do you know what I'm talking about, Seth? I think you had talked about this a couple of days ago. Mm. It's that that other realm that is always here, the realm that we can't see. And so this was invoked in me, that realm to be right there. It was invoked on me and pushed upon me when I was a child. And so I was traumatized and tortured by these principalities and entities when I was a little kid. And um, New, New Mexico also, you know, these little villages and the reservations. Oh, there's a yeah. lot of there's a lot of occult and witchcraft and shape shifting. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, uh, I hear stories all the time about, uh, you know, from. Um, Native Americans who are on the, you know, go back home and then they see this, you know, the village witch turn into an owl and fly away, things like that. Yeah. And that you would well, think I, are, are the things of movies, but these things really do happen. Well, and I, I don't know if I had told you, but the house that I grew up in, my parents built around it, but it was more than 100 years old and it was an old stagecoach stop. One of those three foot thick adobe walls, you know, mm. and so... I really felt like there was a lot of stuff flying around that house. And, but anyway, that, um, the good thing that came from that initially was that God taught me how to dream lucidly and to invoke Jesus name when those entities would come around. And he taught me how to, overcome those those principalities when they would come and try to torment you so um that that was a good thing 
but and I think seemed, all of that. It, it seemed to me all though of that was to prepare us for what seems like is our future, you know. So you were told that you were going to go through the end times. Now, right. was it, but but were they rapture believers at that t- church or? No, not that I remember. So you'll have to die for your faith. In other words, you would be uh, five-year-old kids being told you're going to be martyred, killed mercilessly for, for your, because you belong to God, obviously. And And you don't have any choice. This is what you have to do. And you have to do it. Yeah. And you're five and you're five. (laughs) Right. There's just, you're just not ready for that kind of reality in the world. Um, so you carried this all these years and all these visions and horrors about the end times and mass death on the earth. Right. And then you wrote this song. Yeah. And then you, you wanted to see what I could do with it. We had an earlier version of it and that was a pretty promising, you know, inspirational version, but it wasn't finished yet because Obviously, the journey of this song, it seems to me, observing you, it was the, you know, you weren't healed yet, even though, you know, you were kind of talking, you know, by bringing the song out into the light, you were on the beginning of a healing journey, I I would say, from that trauma. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, we weren't going to be satisfied with that earlier version that, that I had done it was like we just felt that there was more to do so you kept reworking the song to bring it into the studio i know but it didn't work and we we worked (laughs) on it we worked on it for a week and i was just totally frustrated and and then you and i rewrote parts of it Mm -hmm. and god finally brought it to the conclusion you know yeah, and the conclusion is, I carry the end of days inside this trauma and these uh-huh. visions, but what right. was meant for harm by these demons, entities, whatever you want to call them, you know, witches, right. etc., God will use for healing, for the good. So the, the song changed from end of days inside to uh, meant for harm, because what was meant for harm ends up producing healing, wholeness, and faith. And, and strength. And, and peace. Yeah. And so we, we're working on the song. At one point, I thought, maybe she's psycho. <laughs> 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 you know, maybe where I'm, I just don't know yeah. her, and now I'm really getting the other side. I'm really getting the, you know, the and, and it, it wasn't. You were just frustrated, but you were saying, I just want to take, like, this guitar and turn it up on 11. And just just play it over the whole thing so you can't even hear anything but the guitar. I mean, there were right. there were moments like that where I thought, okay, I just knew I had to keep a calm head. And um, what ended up happening is we had to work through some stuff. We had to talk about some things. Yeah, we did. And then, because I guess whenever there's a healing afoot, we resist it. You know, I mean, it was like because there was something new that had to come in to replace this familiar thing that you'd had all these years. You know, uh, well, there was there was um, there was shame with that. There was the shame of end of days inside. And just the thought of having to share that with other people, it was frightening. Mm -hmm. And right now I can honestly say it's not frightening anymore because. I'm sure that there are lots of lambs out there that have been through their own traumas that have um, marked them in ways that they've had to grow and, and become strong from. But yeah. that's what the main thing that's gone now from, from all of this experience is the shame. I don't feel all full of shame and I'm not afraid to say what, I've gone through, not, not afraid to share it. I didn't want to share it a year, but before we were tracking the song, I didn't want to share it at all. So it was a secret shame, a secret thing you kept deep inside. And how many of us have those things? 
Right. When, they're, when they're brought to the light, guess what? We have relief. That's right. The thorn is removed. But then because we've had that thorn so long, we, we sometimes we, we resist the healing. Yeah. And or it becomes a trauma or reliving the trauma. And I think we went through some of that reliving of the trauma. But then all of a sudden we we put down, I remember the beginning of the song. It just seemed so bizarre because it was like you were playing piano. You had a piano line you wanted to do. And it was very soft. It wasn't one Carry the end of days inside. 
lose the service. That's what closes yeah. the album. It's, it's uh, the whole experience is kind of like being in church in a way. And, and at the same time, being on a life journey to a uh, healing wholeness, but, but not shying away in denial from the satanic, the evil stuff, what was meant for no. harm, the cold stone, the tro- the, the, the things we carry, the thorns in our side, all those things are there. But in the end, it just kind of explodes into light, you know, to God be the glory. And you can see the angels and you see the, 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 the you know, it's, it's almost like the line in the book of Revelation where there's every tear will be dried, you know, the new Jerusalem. It's, it's just kind of, exp- and then you can't even think about our own personal problems when you get into that, to God be all the glory. We just get caught up in the clouds with him. Yeah. And then, and then it ends. It's just an incredible album. You know, even though if I do say so myself, I've just, uh, I think we both have talked about how kind of amazing when we look back, it's hard to see that the, uh, a tapestry was, you know, just gives us more faith in God that he wove this tapestry using us. And we never really had to worry about the, the music. It was a thing. He, no. had, he had it all the time. Well, it, we hadn't, we didn't really talk about it in in this podcast, but um, you know how I feel about the kingdom of God, and you know how excited I, I get t- talking about the kingdom, the kingdom, bringing in the kingdom, and that's what that's what this work does is it gives you the tools to bring in the kingdom, but it also ushers in the kingdom through the sound of it. And the mystery of the kingdom of God is that it resides within us. And we bring it forth by relinquishing ourselves to the sovereignty of God. And I'm just going to leave it at, well leave put. it at that. I yes, mean, that's, well that's, that's a lot to think about, but yeah. This is about ushering in the kingdom. Thy will be done. Yeah. Your kingdom come, your will be done. And that makes people cry because they finally give up the the weight and the burden on themselves. And when you take that off a person, the response is to be overwhelmed in the spirit and tears flow. But they're tears right. of, they're tears of joy, not of sorrow. Right. You know, they're tears of relief. You know, it's like if this story finally ends and your burden is finally over, you will just break down crying because you've carried it all this time. It's like, it's over, really? You know, we're at peace now. Uh, And then the response is to just let it go. All those tears pent up just flood out of you. And that's called healing. That's where the healing is. Right. You know, letting all that go. And then, you know, so it's a, you know, it's a, it's a unique thing. That's why we're doing this uh, podcast. And that's why I'm insisting that, you know, if you can um, get the CD so you can listen to it all the way through or, you know, wait till it goes to iTunes, I suppose, and download it, but just try to keep it all in a playlist. So it goes one track to the next when it's on your iPod or your iPad or whatever device you're using or your, you know, your Samsung or Nokia or whatever the phones are out there, you know, you can, it's really easy to, to, to hear this. We don't know what's really going to happen with the album because we, you know, we just stood out, you stepped out in good faith, you know, to make it. It seemed that along the way though, the Lord opened up all these doors to get it done. Yeah, he did. And so you know, obviously he's got something on his mind there, you know, he definitely, you know, wants it out there. And we have had to differentiate between, we have had to differentiate between this and the Christian music industry, not so much to put it down. No, not to condemn it, but to show what could be possible if, you know, the program directors and various people who are the gatekeepers uh, yeah. of the music and they stop certain music from coming forth, especially independent music to make room for the, the moneyed, you know, uh, big, big boys. And, but it's kind of a, it, it's almost like if the Lord's speaking through it, he will, he will reach them at some point. I don't know how, but he'll, something will happen where the, the, you know, door will be open. And then, you know, my hope is that it inspires independent artists to be independent and let the Lord lead rather than doing songs that you think will work 
at your church or at your um, with the program director and the radio who who has the fifteen hundred radio stations that you need to get through, so he will approve it to be on the air, even though it's an independent production. It just seems almost impossible for 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 you know the the the, the truth to get out for anything but these few people that dominate the uh, quote industry unquote the ba- Babylon, and then we end up you know we say you know it, it, it's it is what it is. It's part of the Babylon system. Yeah. Again, not saying it to condemn it, but we're just, you know, prophetically calling it out and saying, you know, your days are numbered. You know, this monopoly on music on. Oh, sorry, my earphone on music and this monopoly of keeping, you know, a certain amount of artists. At, you know, working. um, And looking for the next thing that will emulate the secular music world um, so that you can make money on your Christian records. In other words, you know, it's just Babylon. It's, it's not really real because it's coming from this place of, of um, you know, not the spirit, but of commerce and of, you know, the same place, fear and greed is where the music industry lives in the secular world. They're, they want to push somebody. They're afraid they spend a million dollars in advertising and it's going to flop or greed. Oh, this guy, Justin Bieber, he's really hot. I'm going to push. I'm going to make millions off him, you know? And so it's, and then, so that's the greed. So it goes between one or the other. And, and all of this is inappropriate around the Lord. You know, all of this is, 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 is anathema to God's will. So it's, yeah. it's you, but people say, well, what are you going to do about it? Don't be so condemning. Don't be so judgmental or, you know, um, I've got 15,000 albums here to, to equally good as yours. And, uh, you know, they, they're not getting their shot. So why should you have yours? And it's like, no, it's not a shot. We, we just want to share the music because we feel it will help. Not only That's help, right. but, but we also feel it will give people a new sense of music. You know, right. We'll, you know, just a new, insp- how about this? It will inspire you. you yeah. Know? Well, <laughs> um, I'm old enough and, uh, maybe, maybe jaded isn't the right word, but, uh, I, <laughs> I am jaded enough to realize that, you know, there wasn't a lot of potential for me in the secular world in music god has kept me out of it all these years and um i think that's because for good reason (laughs) i yeah i I think i would have blown it i really do i think i would have just um become another superficial um airhead i don't think so i i don't know i think he just he kept me safe because he kept me near him and um He's kept me isolated in a lot of ways, but like you, the Until thing now. that I want most is I, I want I want people to hear this music. I want them to hear it, and I want it to bring joy to them, like it's brought joy to us, mm-hmm. and all of the other things. And the other most important thing is that we don't know what's coming in the future, and I'm not going to speculate about smack. I'm not going to say that. It's pretty bad out there, you know. Adonai Salih. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. The Lord is my rock, in whom I take refuge. He is my The horn of my salvation I call to you, Lord You are worthy 
of all my praise. Yes, you are. The Lord lives in praise be to my Did be God, my Savior. The Lord lives in praise me to my right. Exalted be God, my Savior. The Lord lives in praise me to my When the cords of death entangle The torrents of destruction overwhelm Oh, in my distress I call upon you, Lord I do not hear You keep my lamp burning You turn my dark delight You train my hands for battle and growing leaps and bounds yeah but i i still don't know what's going to happen with it and i don't need to know i think um i i'm confident god has brought us through the last year and brought everything together yeah and you and i are still friends and that's really good because this was hard at times you know and and i think that Lesser people would have left, let their egos get in the way. Well, the producer I'll, artist uh, thing is always going to be tense. It's, oh, yeah. It's, no, I'm telling you that, but you need a producer to do these albums and you need the yeah. artist and you need the, the producer provides, you know, uh, guidance. The produ- producer dev- provides um, music, you know, fill in music and or, or hires it or somehow, you know what I mean, develops the music. And and uh, the producer uh, has the feedback, and and then you know the whole idea is to create a space for the artist to create, you know, just to create, you know, right. And and the collaboration of the two is what gives you a good album. That's Ar- right. Artists that do their own album. I mean, me, if I do my own album, it's not going to be as like this, as co- is as great as this was because it's you need both. You need that. You know, the producer is looking at one thing. And the artist is looking at something else. 
Right. And, and you need both. And then, then that can be tense because, you know, the artist feels like, oh, I'm in chains here. <laughs> well, I, I think it, I think it's a good exercise in relationships. I mean, it's, it's good when you, when you realize that the most important thing at the end of the day is that you've done your best yeah, yeah. and that you've given your love the best way that you know how, and you can incorporate that in any relationship that you have. And even though this was that we were making a creative thing, yeah, um, yeah. it, because it was a spiritual process and journey, we had all of these other things that we had to walk through and grow through as well. Like spiritual so, warfare coming at us to try to not yeah, have it, to, to try to yeah. block the album or, or you exactly. know, the, you know, intentions created by the demonic realm. Because whenever you do yeah. anything about Jesus, the Lord and all this, you're going to get that uh, flack coming back if you're doing it right. And That's then right. re realizing all we have to do is pray and wait this thing out and be patient and it'll, and, it, That's right. and it, it's going to, it's going to write itself. But yeah, if we were younger, probably, um, hot, more hot headed, it'd be like, Oh, and you know, I don't care anymore. You know, there's, there's all, <laughs> there's all this, um, all that kind of stuff that, you know, the sort of prima donna attitude that younger people really have more than, than once you mature a little bit, you, you learn to rely on the Lord. It's, there's a problem where, you know, I think we would take it to the Lord rather than trying to hash it out. And then yeah. we would talk after taking it to the Lord. And then it was just amazing how he just kept smoothing out the way. But yeah, people can get into conflicts and creative projects. That's why most bands break up. Right. You know, and most people that work on movies, um, end up yeah, at each other's throats, you know, and, you know, actors are working on a movie, you know, they have to be in a love scene with this, uh, th this girl that they hate and, or they have to pretend they like kissing her or something like that. And they can't stand each other. You know what I mean? There's, there's all kinds okay. of things like that going but on. The and integrity, so. the integrity of this album has been sustained because we trusted God through the whole thing. That was the and mediator. That that's was the why that's the I, 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 I'm excited to see what happens in the future with it because I know that his blessing is on it. So, okay, well, and I, I think that's... I, I do have to tell you one thing is that before we leave is that I really, I, I appreciate you and thank you so much for taking a chance on me and um, giving me the opportunity to open my mouth and to sing again. And, and the Lord didn't want you to be... He born. was there the Thank you so much, Steph, and, and I really, this was so much fun. He was there the whole time I'm with you You were marked as a lamb But you're seen as a fool You were marked as a lamb But you're seen as a fool But you belong to him, wayward child. Turn around, turn around, turn around.
Father's love